Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome to another episode of What's New in Skincare, February 2022. If you are new to this channel, this is of course a series where I talk about new skincare releases. I break this video into different price points, drugstore, Korean, which is its own thing really, and high-end products. I will have different timestamps in the description box below to those categories, as well as links to everything I talk about, and I will affiliate those whenever I can. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. A couple of announcements before we start up the video. If you are interested in what I'll be trialing, uh, it is actually relevant to what's new in skincare. I did buy the new Pharmacy Honey Potion Plus mask, so I've decided to redo a pharmacy video. I actually don't have one on my channel right now. I had one years ago, but pharmacy has discontinued almost everything that they had back then. It's just a completely different line these days, so it'll end up being one of those videos that's more of the best and worst type of focus since it's products I've, aside from this one, been using for more than two weeks, obviously. I did also get a sample of the new Pharmacy 10% Niacinamide Night Mask. <laughs> And hopefully I overcome my uh, current fears around niacinamide and actually can at least try it. Let's see if my skin responds well to it. So that will be coming in about two weeks. Or wait, no, from the time you see this video, ab about one week, one week. And then also, in case you missed it, I have been rediscovering makeup lately, so I already have a review up, a first impression really, of the Kosas Revealer Foundation. I really thought I wasn't going to like it. I really did. That's the only reason I did a first impression is I thought it was going to be a disaster on my skin if I applied enough to reach the SPF on the label, but you can see that video if you're interested. It wasn't. I'm wearing it today as a foundation. It's, it's really well done. And I also bought the new Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. The reason I'm putting these in what's new in skincare is because both of these foundations promise all of these skincare benefits. With this one, I loved the old version so much that I really want to do a very dedicated review on this, talk about using it for a week, two weeks, something like that. So that will be coming soon on this channel. I want to do a really good job on this review. <laughs> But let's go ahead and get into today's video, starting with products at the drugstore. If you saw my dupes video, you saw that I could not keep my mouth shut on the new Sweet Chef Carrot Ginger and Salicylic Acid Pore Cleanser. So I did already talk about that in that video. It is such a well done cleanser, especially if you have a similar skin type to mine. I do have dry and acne prone skin. This is not a drying cleanser, and yet it is an incredibly fun, foamy cleanser. Uh, it is, it does contain salicylic acid, but like I said in that video, we don't know the percentage, if it really matters in a cleanser or not. Anyway, is a whole nother conversation. Basically, it is very well done. This was gifted to me by the brand, and quite a few of you said you'd be interested in seeing uh, more reviews of this brand, so uh, I am considering that. I, I like it that much. I am considering it. This is interesting. I was scrolling the Ulta website and I happened to notice that CeraVe has released two new products. So first of all, we have the alcohol-free hydrating toner for sensitive dry skin. Um, <laughs> hi. Hi. This is currently out of stock, so I'm not entirely sure when it's coming, but $9.99 for 6.8 ounces. It says it is alcohol fragrance and oil-free, pH balanced with ceramides, hyaluronic acid, and niacinamide. Whoa, in the benefits, dermatologist recommended is in all capital letters. I love that so much. This is, is it even out yet? Is it even out for dermatologists to recommend? Dermatologist recommended though. You know what they did, right? They asked one dermatologist, hey, can you look at this and uh, say you recommend it? Uh, sure, I recommend it. Dermatologist recommended. It looks fine though. It's nice to see the ceramides in this. I don't know if I'll immediately purchase it, but yeah, it might be a nice option. And then we also have the plant-based hydrating makeup removing face wipes. CeraVe, are you trying to make enemies? You know how the skincare world feels about makeup wipes. But they say these are biodegradable. Look, the thing is most makeup wipes are biodegradable. I really think that uh, the concerns around makeup wipes are 
overinflated. And yet, all that said, if you are still using makeup wipes every single night to remove your makeup, please try a cleansing balm, a cleansing oil, a biphase remover. There's so many better options. And yet, you know, the thing about makeup wipes is I think they're great in a pinch. I like to camp. I've done a lot of camping in my life. To this day, I will grab makeup wipes if I am camping. What's with the all capitals under benefits? This makes me feel like I'm reading something from one of those conspiracy theory websites. And yet I, I write in all capitals sometimes. I definitely do. Anyway, I can't critique it too hard. Um, yeah, they're fragrance free. They contain ceramides. Honestly, these look fine. You know, would I, again, recommend it every single day? Probably not. But is it probably fine in a pinch? Absolutely. Actually, I got something in PR I want to show you really quickly. I don't even need to turn the camera off since my microphone is attached. Although, <laughs> do pardon the pajamas. Tell me you're a YouTuber without telling me you're a YouTuber. Or that you work at home. I know you all understand. I even ironed my shirt before today's video. But could I be bothered to put on pants? Absolutely not. Anyway, these are really nice little cotton rounds that are made by a company by the name of Three Ships. They are quite a nice design. I've never seen anything quite like this where you can slip your fingers inside of it so you get a lot of control using these. This one is my favorite. It even says on it, Perfect skin doesn't exist. Thank you for that reminder. Sometimes I need it. But something like this paired with a cleansing oil is such a better system every single day. And you know, you don't have to keep repurchasing products. The one tip I would absolutely give you with products like this is make sure you use unscented detergent. I'll link those below if you're interested as well. A couple more things that are new at Ulta. First of all, we now have Rosen skincare available at Ulta. They're everywhere now. I'm so happy for this company. I love them. This right here is still probably my absolute favorite product from the brand and one of my favorite products as a whole, the Super Smoothie Cleanser. It is so enjoyable to use. It is an exfoliating cleanser, but it is so gentle. It uses fruit seeds in place of, you know, walnut shells or whatever uh, harsh ingredients that people in the skincare circles often do not like. It's very gentle and so, so nice to use. So huge congratulations to Rosen. And I think I do want to talk about the new releases from The Ordinary really quickly. It looks like uh, we only have the conditioner. Oh, this is hair care, by the way. <laughs> So feel free to skip this if you're not interested, but I think a fair enough amount of people are curious what The Ordinary, a brand known for their skincare, is doing with hair care now. So they have released a shampoo, a conditioner, and a scalp serum. All of those are available at Sephora. So I'm gonna jump over to that website for a moment. We have the Sulfate 4% Shampoo Cleanser for body and for hair. The Behentramonium Chloride 2% Conditioner, $8 for both of these, and then the Natural Moisturizing Factors and Hyaluronic Acid Scalp Serum. Because yes, you absolutely can use those ingredients on not just your skin, but on your hair and your scalp. So why, why does this have a one-star rating? Bad ingredients. Had sulfate as its second ingredient, which can damage your hair. Aw, oh, jeez. You know, for as much as the skincare community does have its quirks about, you know, makeup wipes and St. Ives, ugh, the hair care community, oh, that's a tough community. They have such a specific set of rules and way of doing things. I could never be a hair, I could never be a hair influencer because my hair isn't naturally gorgeous and that's what it really takes. But I digress. This whole sulfates are bad for your hair thing, it's just, it's probably true for some people, but there are a lot of people who do well with sulfates. So I'm actually including this in this video because I want to highlight how nice it is to see the ordinary recognize this and not be afraid to name their products what it actually is. Yeah, both me and my partner, we both agree that we do better using sulfates and we do better washing our hair every two to three days instead of the whole wash your hair once a week thing. So, you know, the, the general advice that people have given for years, it just doesn't apply to every last person. So yeah, I probably will update you on these. I, I'm very curious, $8 for eight ounces. These are incredible price points. I love how simple and straightforward it is. Moving into Korean skincare, you know I've got to update you on this product, even though I did talk about it last month. I bought the Beauty of Joseon Green Plum Refreshing Cleanser, and you already saw this mentioned in passing if you watched my Mary and May video. 
but it is so, so good. They were advertising that, uh, you know, it doesn't feel drying on your skin, that it does have a low pH, and I was hesitant because a lot of Korean cleansers have been harsh on my skin. It doesn't leave my skin feeling stripped at all. It is so gentle and enjoyable to use. It is a very well done cleanser. Is there anything from this dang brand that I've hated? I don't, I don't think there is. I know that uh, some people had problems with the old version of their cleansing balm stinging the eyes, but they've updated that and fixed that problem. I feel like they, as a brand, are so good at listening to feedback and therefore making or reformulating products to be exactly what people want. I, th that's why they're my number one favorite brand. We have a reformulation of the Pyongkang Yule Ato Mild Sun Cream. This one has been uh, unavailable for about a year, but it is back and it actually has has a higher SPF now. It is an SPF of 50, PA++++ now, and the sunscreen filters used are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, the mineral filters, and for chemical filters, homosalate as well as octosalate, which actually all of these work for me. I am sensitive to certain ingredients in sunscreens, but these all work for me. No added fragrance. Looks like it, it does have quite a few plant-based ingredients, so certainly check it if you do have allergies, but overall, this looks like a nice product and I've heard really good things about the old version so yeah I think I am I am interested in picking this one up as well I don't have a lot of products for this month but I unfortunately have some sad news here so it looks like we in the US will be losing the company Mamond. They have decided to pull out of the US market. Now, this is unfortunate because I know a lot of people really in particular like their toner and it's been available at Ulta for years. But yeah, unfortunately they're leaving. However, I do believe you will be able to purchase this still from uh, Korean retailers. So again, I'll link my Korean retailer comparison. I like all of those companies, by the way. There's, there's not an objective best for me. It's just whichever one is best for you. You know, I'm not actually surprised that Mamond is leaving. They, like Primera, are both under Amore Pacific, and I kind of get this feeling that Amore Pacific wants to focus the most on their own brand or maybe develop some of their newer brands a bit more. What's that one brand that I tried under Amore Pacific? I actually liked them. Uh, enough Project. So it seems like, uh, it seems to me that they're kind of phasing out that middle ground, the <laughs> mid-range pricing point, and keeping Amore Pacific and then these more affordable levels. I don't know, I'm still sad about it though, because again, you know, it's always sad when uh, products that you were just able to go to Ulta and buy real easily are pulled from the market, so sorry for the bad news. Moving into high-end, I had a few requests in last month's What's New in Skincare. Always feel free to request reviews on my channel. I'll try to review whatever I can. And one of the requests was for the Skin Fix Acne Plus 2% BHA Acne Spot Treatment. So I actually did get this in PR. I went ahead and gave it a go this past month, and what I will tell you is I like the concept of it, but this product for my skin is not a perfect match. What it is, is a 2%, wait a minute, I never noticed this. There's a label over a label here. Hold on, I gotta get curious. What were you originally called? Oh, azelaic acid BHA spot treatment. Did somebody on the market already have that? Anyway, it's the 2% BHA acne spot treatment, but yes, it does contain azelaic acid. Azelaic acid is an ingredient that can help with redness, so I actually really enjoy a combination of salicylic acid and azelaic acid. But as I've said in so many videos, my favorite product here, and now I have multiples and multiple sizes of this, is the Tula Clear It Up Acne Clearing and Tone Correcting Gel. I treat this exactly like a serum, that's how I would recommend to treat it. it, it really is a serum in spite of its name, and it is a wonderful way for me to both prevent more breakouts and also reduce redness. So the thing is, this product being a spot treatment is something that is meant to be used after the pimples have already formed. I think this is going to be great if you're somebody who just more occasionally has breakouts, especially if they are the red and inflamed type. I'm telling you, azelaic acid 
paired with salicylic is a great idea if you deal with redness around your pimples, right? But the problem with a spot treatment for me as somebody who can actually have a lot of breakouts is I, I just, I have to be more preventive. So for me, Tula still wins very clearly here. Very clearly, this did not help prevent breakouts, although it did help to soothe the ones that were popping up. And then also to update you on the Peace Out Retinol Face Stick, I used this in a video a while ago, and the thing is, I finally took the time to read the packaging. Y'all, apparently the way you are supposed to use this is last in your routine after moisturizer. And go figure, now that I've tried that approach, it does glide better on my skin. But all that said, that's like a, a built-in way of doing the what's, the, what's the skincare thing called, a retinol sandwich? Admittedly, that is a good idea if you are a beginner to retinol, so you still may enjoy this product. But for me, I think what was so surprising is that I actually really like the eye stick. I love the retinol eye stick that Peace Out does. But the face stick was not an instant favorite. Maybe that's just because I've been using retinoids for... Oh God, it's five years now, <laughs> it's five years. So I'm well past the point of a retinol sandwich, but uh, you know, it may be a great option for people who are new or at all nervous about incorporating retinols. And one more uh, kind of catch up product here, because I think this was released maybe a, a little while ago, the Ule Henriksen Strength Trainer Peptide Boost Moisturizer. I wanted to talk about this in today's video because I have seen so many glowing reviews of this product. It uh, highlights the peptides in here, and I've seen people saying it's high in peptides because of where they're placed in the ingredients list. <sighs> Y'all cannot be guessing at the percent of ingredients. You can't do it. You can't do it. It is extremely low with peptides, okay? We had this conversation in, again, my Mary and May video, so see that if you want more of a conversation around how much peptides to use. But it does not matter that the peptides start in the 10th ingredient spot. They are still in here at under 1% for sure. That is the 1% line. I guarantee it, I was looking at the formulation sheets for these ingredients, acetylhexapeptide 8. Okay, great. So that ingredient is used at levels between 0.005% and 0.0%. 0.5%. There's no way that this product has a higher percentage of peptides, and even if it did, that's not what matters with peptides. With peptides, they're larger molecules, so it actually matters more to focus on the delivery system, to focus on penetration enhancing ingredients. That's why the microneedling system, the dissolving microneedling, microneedling patches that Peace Out has that also contain peptides, that's why I actually do think those are a great idea. What's a parallel? What's a, hold on, I gotta think of a good parallel for y'all. Oh, I got one that's relevant to a recent experience I had. So it doesn't matter how much food you take home in your little takeout box from a restaurant. You can have a huge planned dinner for the following day. You've got everything in your little takeout box. If you fail to put it in the refrigerator overnight, it doesn't matter if you had a lot or a little because you can't have any of it. I can't believe I forgot to put my food in the fridge, y'all. I'm so sad. If you don't have a good delivery system of peptides into your skin, it does not matter if you have uh, the teeniest amount or a ton. That's what matters. Percentage is a, a moot argument in this case. Am I making sense? I hope so. So why are they listed so high? Because again, the 1% line, anything can be listed in any order after that. And you know, I really, I'm not really a big fan of the fact that companies have started saying, hey, hey, push the peptides to the top of the list. Push them up. People will love that. Because as long as there are some companies doing this, then other companies also have to do this, and people are all still just judging on the wrong parameters. <laughs> Sorry to get so worked up. Anyway, I have tried this. It's fine. It has a really nice texture. Nope, nope. I'm not, I'm not done because I have one more gripe. I cannot believe I've seen people saying this is fragrance free. Not only can you, you know, look at the ingredients and see the word fragrance, but how do you not smell this? I have a weak nose. I have a weak nose and there is no way I could smell this and think it is a fragrance free product. If you think that, you might want to get, you know, those, those at home tests for, you know, you know what? Mm. 
Definitely a scented product. It's Ole Henriksen. Ole Henriksen products in a pinch can double as perfumes. Just dab a bit of your serum on your wrists. I am so not wrong. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's fine. It's not as groundbreaking if you ask me as I've seen people saying it is. It's it's fine. It's it's fine. Oh, we've got some new sunscreens to talk about. We've got a lot of sunscreens for your hotter booster summer. Mm, it, what happened to hot vac summer? We were promised that and we definitely did not get it. Oh, it's probably that not enough people got vaccinated. Anyway, let's start with the Kinship Self Reflect Sport SPF 60 Triple Ceramide Moisturizing Sunscreen Zinc Oxide Broad Spectrum. I need a nap after that name. $28 for 1.7 ounces, which actually isn't, that's not too bad for more of a, a mid-range price. And it's nice to see Kinship introduce this because like I was talking about in Thursday's video, uh, you know, SPF 60 is kind of hard to formulate in a mineral format. Uh, I really want to see some reviews of this before I purchase it because I don't love the original Kinship sunscreen. And yet, as I say all the time about it, I, I do understand the appeal. It really is a truly moisturizing sunscreen, which is rare. It just also feels heavy. I can't help but think this, it's gotta be a similar format to that, right? It, it has to be. All-in-one mega hydrating moisture treatment with water resistant mineral SPF for healthy, bouncy, dewy skin. Water resistant up to 80 minutes. Non nano zinc oxide 24%. Ah, oh, I want it. I want a sample. I, I want to get a sample of this. It's at Ulta, so it should be a matter of time before we get a sample. Another sunscreen for today's video. Uh, I'm really sad about this one, actually. Oh, I can't believe I have to say this. It's from Glow Recipe, and it's called their Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Sunscreen SPF 50. It is an adorable packaging. It looks like it is probably a very cute and probably very cosmetically elegant product. However, uh, this is just me talking about my own allergies. I will not be able to try this because it uses octocrylene. Every time I've used a sunscreen with octocrylene in the past, I get a, a stinging and burning sensation on my skin. So unfortunately, it's just a contact allergy that will prevent me from being able to try this. Nope, 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 sorry. We have one more sunscreen to talk about. As of Monday, February 28th, this is available for those of you who are rouge, as you can see here. Um, we're gonna skip the La Mer products because no offense La Mer, but I don't care about you. Tatcha, however, I am actually very intrigued by this one. So this says it is the Silk Sunscreen Mineral Broad Spectrum SPF 50 PA++++ with hyaluronic acid and niacinamide. That is an expensive product. It really is, but I know some people love Tatcha and what actually got me to buy this. Yes, so... I did buy this, uh, is some people in the reviews who were saying that it is uh, very nice paired with makeup. That's been a big problem for me, so I'm willing to give this one a go. I hope the uh, reviewers who got it for free were telling me the truth, but in case they weren't, I will come back and tell you all how this product goes, so stay tuned. A new release from Dr. Laura Devgan, who I definitely have talked about on this channel. This is called the Retinol and Bacuchiol Serum 2.5X, and it is $300 hairs. So, $300 for 2.5X, the retinol? The heck does that mean? What, what is that? What 2.5X what? 2.5 times the price point? Because that's kind of what it looks like. They don't even tell you. They do, how useless is it to say 2.5 times and then not disclose the percentage of Bacuchiol and retinol in your product? It, oh, it's so frustrating. Let's see if we can see anything in the ingredients list that warrants that $300 price point. D do you? Do you see anything? For goodness sakes, if you want 2.5 times whatever that means, the amount of retinol, please see your dermatologist and get a prescription for the strongest retinoid out there, which will cost you a fraction of the price of this serum. I have one final product to end today's video on, and it's actually a new release from SkinCeuticals. <laughs> 
it's it's a hundred five dollars. Dr. Lara, why are your products more expensive than SkinCeuticals? Come on. Anyway, this is called the Phyto A Plus Brightening Treatment, and it's quite an interesting direction for SkinCeuticals. So it contains 2% alpha arbutin, which is a great ingredient for brightening and evening, 3% azelaic acid, which I talked about earlier in this video, and then 5.75% phytobotanical blend. Helps calm, soothe, and reduce visible redness. What's so interesting to me about this is that it seems to me, my experience with SkinCeuticals products, they don't really use that much uh, botanical ingredients and yet they certainly are in this one we have some olive leaf rosemary leaf grapefruit not the essential oils but the extracts cucumber Lightweight moisturizer helps soothe and correct out of balance skin to improve brightness, texture, and clarity. I do like that, of course, at SkinCeuticals, they always do their own research. It says they have uh, tested this on all skin tones. You know, it's funny, uh, the first time I read that, I was like, why? And then I realized that's actually pretty important. That is something that all companies do need to make sure they're doing, especially with brightening products, is to make sure that it does work on all skin tones. So in their research, they saw that it reduced post blemish marks by 20%, rough texture by 19%, and clarifies by 28%. When it comes to SkinCeuticals, I definitely don't think everyone needs to buy it, and like I've said before, I do think there are I personally think there are products that are better than the vitamin C, but I am actually intrigued by this one. I'm intrigued to see them, uh, I'm, I'm in intrigued and excited to see botanical ingredients getting a respect in the scientific communities because I've been saying for ages on this channel, and Korean skincare has known this for years, there absolutely is promise in botanical ingredients, but we have to study them. We have to figure out why and how and what are the constituents in these plant ingredients that have have benefits for the skin. So this is actually really exciting. I hope to see more of this from other brands that have traditionally looked more at the, uh, you know, man-made ingredients. I'm excited. But that's it for this month's What's New in Skincare. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. We'll probably have a longer video for the month of March. So again, let me know if there's any products you want me to highlight. I hope you all have a fantastic week. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy today's video, and I will see you all next time.